John Phillips, episode quattro, four. Uh, episode one, a part one of this series goes through uh, how I got involved all the way through my investigation of Jeff Lowe. Episode two gets into the rest of my investigation. Um, episode three gets into the start of the facts. Look, you can't, you can't tell this story properly without understanding Carol Baskin's run-ins with James Gerritsen and Jeff Lowe prior to um, them getting hooked up with Joe Exotic. So now you've got Carol versus Joe. So now you got to look at Carol Baskin and Joe Exotic. So, uh, you know, 2010, 2000, 2008 to 2012, um, Carol started uh, learning about, she had, she had moved on from James Gerritsen. She had shut him down. He was operating in the dark. And now she was... Um, she had moved on to, to, um, Joseph Schreibogel, then Joseph Maldonado, then Joseph Maldonado Passage, um, there are lots of names there, uh, affectionately known as Joe Exotic. So Joe Exotic TV was the name of his TV show. Um, Joe has developed, you know, we could all learn branding from Joe, um, both in what to do and what not to do. And Joe was, like, they laugh in Tiger King 1 and, and some other shows and interviews about how Carol hired a PR agent to haunt Joe as he went from shopping mall to shopping mall to do his magic show that he started incorporating tigers, um, you know, in his own little very regional Siegfried and, and, and Roy type, you know, mall, shopping mall production. And she teamed up with PETA because they have distribution lists that they can hit. And all of a sudden you got people um, everywhere shutting, you know, threatening and shutting people down. But he was also making a new enemy. This video shows cubs being displayed in a mall by one of Joe Schreibogel's entities. So the harassment started on, you know, Joe didn't know who Carol was until she started harassing him. Carol, really? Okay, you follow me around the country, harassing me because I take animals out into the public, and you did the same thing. Chicken shit. And so now Joe has this production. They're going city to city. Um, money's starting to run dry. Bookings are starting to cancel. For the past year, Susan Bass had been tracking Joe's mall tour. At one point, we actually hired uh, a man to follow Joe's truck from city to the next city. And, um, you know, just we came up with really creative ways to try to figure out where he was going next. She used a fake profile to keep tabs on his Facebook page. They would call me and they would be like, you know, you've crashed my system. I agree, we'll never have cubs again. Stop, just stop. <laughs> um, animals, you know, have to be fed. And so there's... There's, um, they, they modify. And, you know, if you read Joe's book, do I have it right here? I don't. If you read Joe's book, it talks about kind of how he evolved with animals. And we're going to get into this with a, with a separate video. Um, but y you need to realize Carol Baskin is a hypocrite. Okay. And so to the extent she's claiming Joe did things that she's never done, you got to ask yourself, is, is that true? When, when Wildlife on Easy Street was founded, look, that, that was originally founded by Don Lewis, okay? This is all going to roll back in and out of Don Lewis's life. So Don Lewis, remember, married uh, Carol Baskin. Uh, but when when Wildlife on Easy Street was founded, I have the, I have the Articles of Corporation right here. Uh, when Wildlife on Easy Street was founded on March 30th, 1995, the AOI was signed by Don Lewis and Carol Lewis. Okay. Uh, they were the directors of Wildlife on Easy Street. Jamie Lewis is also noted on the uh, as a director. Well, there's no such thing as Jamie Lewis, uh, which is interesting. Uh, Jamie Murdoch is, is Carol's daughter, but on the form, you'll see it's 
it's it's Jamie Lewis. So that that alone is is quite interesting um, about this form and and it, it, you know again um, Carol repeatedly and, and we'll address it in, an, in another video another Tiger Tales but Carol repeatedly maintains Don couldn't read Don couldn't research a deal he could just barely read and could only make his investments based on what he was told uh, you know he he absolutely could you know but uh, he. The most important thing from the Articles of Corporation, for purposes of right now, is the, the purpose of Wildlife on Easy Street. The specific purposes for which the corporation is organized is acquisition, shelter, feeding, breeding, and socialization of exotic and non-exotic animals, public education and awareness to benefit their wild counterparts. So breeding was an initial uh, purpose of wildlife on Easy Street. Then you get into uh, some of Carol's writings, which talk about breeding. Um, you know some of her applications to the, to to certain organizations in order to breed. Um, you know, there's so many pictures, and we'll flash through a couple right now. There's so many pictures of Carol bottle feeding animals and playing with animals and walking animals on a leash. Um, and you get into uh, some of the one ads that were, that were placed by wildlife on easy street, which we'll run through right now. And you realize the evolution of wildlife on easy street was just far ahead of uh, GW Exotics. You, Joe's, Joe's Park was just behind the times because Don Lewis and Carol Lewis, and now Carol Baskin, uh, just had it, had it going beforehand. And, and you got to realize that that's the thing, right? So, so she had this, she did, she did a video. So there's, there's all sorts of evidence that we actually still need to gather but we have an excerpt from what's called the Big Cat's Companion Vehicle, uh, Big Big Cat's Companion Video. And it's a two-hour video instructional in all aspects of wild cat ownership. Again, she was teaching people to own big cats. Two-hour video that, guess what, cost $28. Included postage. So uh, 13 species of exotic cats from the tiny Jeffrey's cat to the huge Siberian tiger are included, bottle bottle rearing, teaching not to bite, uh, leashing, litter training, worming, vaccinations, restraint, and feeding are just a few of the topics covered. And they talk about, you know, the large animals sleeping in the bed with their human family and generally having a grand old time. So again, she's, she was profiting off of, of teaching people, normal people, how to own and care for exotics. That, that's, that's far worse than, than Joe. And, and you know, there was another 100-page uh, book you could buy called Exotic Cats as House Pets by Carol Stairs Lewis. 100-page book that is full of useful information on the raising and keeping of exotic cats. It covers 13 species, um, many of which are endangered and threatened. Zoos do not have good success with breeding, the smaller cats, and they're generally not a crowd-drawing attraction, making the private sector the last chance these cats have for survival. She's She was encouraging these animals not to be a part of zoos back then, that everybody should help f continue the species and, oh, by the way, pay her $35 for this 100-page book uh, available in hardcover, you know, with color photos. So this was all stuff on the on the Woes Wildlife on Easy Street website. You know, they had their glamour shots, which they literally called glamour shots of them with animals. You, you know, the Carol Baskin you hear about now is just completely different than than who she, you know, where she came from. And and again, you you gotta wonder why, right? Like what changed? Did she did she have this moral M moral awakening and I'm not sure if that's the case uh, because we also see 
a lot of information about the USDA going after wildlife on Easy Street and and pushing uh, Carol, just like they did, just like the, some of these departments went after James, just like they were going after uh, Joe. Um, and we know what the feds were doing, you know, in these lawsuits. And so, you know, at some point, she went from the hunted to the hunter, right? And, and you know, the hypocrisy abounds. Again, we'll, we'll dedicate a separate video to this, but, but, you know, on one hand, they say animals, like Big Cat Rescue was really upset about uh, uh, photos of, of, of a couple of wrestlers doing a tiger, uh, tug of war with a tiger. But then when they had tigers, you know, out, um, sleep, they would, they would use paw prints and, and, and sell and push the paw prints or give them out to donors. Um, you know, that they would, that they would again, put on the social media and all the fundraising did. There, there's just time after time after time that we can go after hypocrisy and go after, um, you know, where they say the animals came from her buying animals. That's a separate video. Uh, this, you know, it, it just, I just want you to know um, before we, you know, progress too far that what you think you know about Carol Baskin um, isn't isn't quite the same. I mean, the, she wrote this article for Exotic Market Review in December 1996 when, you know, Don was still alive. And it's How to Choose an Exotic Cat by Carol Lewis Stairs. And she talks that, her husband and her founded Wildlife on Easy Street, and it's home to 120 wild cats representing 20 different breeds. And it goes all through, you know, tigers. Tigers are like a 500 pound bobcat, always full of fun and mischief. Uh, and and they are just playing as they would with each other, but just that one play bite back to the back of your neck and you're dead. And she glamorizes pets. Again, the article's called what? How to choose an exotic cat. It, it's not, it, Joe didn't sell to just anybody. And, and it's just the hypocrisy. And, and, and again, to go up in front of the judge at Joe's resentencing and say, or, or media afterwards, I think, um, and say that Joe deserves 20 years for all the years that she mistreated animals. Well, again, wh wh what about your mistreatment? What about what about the time you spent before you were reformed? Okay, Joe is reforming now. Wh why, why, why shouldn't you stay in prison um, for all the time that you were wrong instead of insisting that, you know, Joe hasn't learned and, 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 and yet you've also said that you would sponsor a, or Carol Baskin also said that she would, she would sponsor, uh, or, 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 um, you know, uh, support clemency or a pardon if, if Joe would, would support her big cat safety act. And so again, it's, it's all this shape shifting stuff and what involvement does the feds have? What leverage did they have on her? You'll, you'll, you'll see that there was quite a bit going on and all of a sudden um, she changed. And that, that doesn't even get into the, you know, to the Airbnb aspect where, where, you know, they openly marketed you could spend the night with animals um, and went on Dateline and, and, and had articles written, I think, at the Chicago Times, Chicago, Chicago Tribune. Um, so... There's a lot more to the story than you think. You know, regardless, uh, it's it it evolved. You know, to where Joe focused on Grady, Winnie, Greater Winnie Wood Exotic Animal Park by multiple names because um, it was GW originally named after his brother, but in honor of his brother, but um, Gerald Wayne. But um, but yeah, so here we are with. Uh, with Joe being kind of hounded and stalked and, and stalked and, and, you know, Carol bragging about having this team. So that takes us uh, to 
a, a series of exhibits that were labeled in Joe's federal trial, but not admitted into Joe's federal trial. You get into what Howard and Carol were doing around then, and they were contacting every possible employee, uh, you know, searching Facebook. If people checked in, they were checking to see who was checking in, checking to see who worked there. And, um, and if you type in 2014, right, um, you'll, you'll get into emails sent in 2015 and 2016 from Anna Frostick. So Anna is the senior attorney at Wildlife and Animal Research, Animal Protection Litigation for Humane Society of the United States. Her email address is literally at humanesociety.org. The Humane Society of the United States, um, and you're going to get to these other third parties, PETA, um, uh, the Animal Legal Defense Fund, um, goodness, just, just, we'll get into it. But Anna sends a 2014 document and talks about how from May 2014 to January 2016, Schreibogel transferred at least 19 big cats and bears, uh, 12 weeks of age and younger to facilities known to use cubs and commercial for commercial entertainment. So they're on him, right? So for so 2016, Anna Frostick is sending Agent Matt Bryant, the lead federal agent, uh, and Amanda Green, now Judge Green. Um, but the lead prosecuting attorney. This is three years before his his criminal trial. Um, multiple years before his indictment. So they're sending him, they're sending all these documents from 2014 um, that even include like 20, 2010 research that they'd been doing. So the Humane Society of the United States was openly and clearly leading a charge to, to have um, uh, the, the chief agent and the, somebody with the DOJ, Amanda Green, who was the chief prosecutor, uh, prosecute Joe. Not for anything necessarily illegal at the time. They're, they're concerned about a moral issue. Uh, they were ahead of their time, obviously, uh, with regard to uh, sensitivity related to cub petting and the movement of cubs. And in some of the email, they talk about, specifically talk about how Joe isn't the big violator that they wanted, but Joe was becoming uh, more influential in, uh, in the streams of, of, of movement of animals. Again, this all goes back to uh, protection of tigers uh, years and years and years before. Meanwhile, Joe is doing these videos um, talking about Carol Baskin and, and what you know should happen to that lady down in Florida. Uh, he didn't use those terms. Um, and, uh, you know, being Joe all over Joe Exotic TV because he's upset, um, because she's constantly on him. She's constantly contacting his current employees and former employees, paying for them to come down to Florida to interview uh, in these pretend depositions and affidavits. So I called uh, Carol Baskin and because she had contacted me prior to that and said, congratulations for getting out there. Now you probably know and stuff. So then I called, I called and told her what happened so then she immediately the very next day flew me out of there to florida to big cat rescue and uh and then while i was in big cat rescue one of the deals also was that i had to do a recorded statement to the usda about what actually goes on there and because of that is kind of what started the whole investigation into joe started this whole netflix thing almost which they then feed back to HSUS, who would then feed it back to um, uh, Agent Matt Bryant, Agent Matt Bryant's cousin, um, which you see a note in there. Hey, cousin, I'm sending this to you. 
I don't know if that was real or just what they called each other because they both were agents named Matt Bryant, named Bryant. But you see this thing, um, barrel roll, and none of it involved murder for hire. It was all the moral issue of what they're doing with Cubs, none of which, none of which, none of which were what he was prosecuted for. Um, you know, they had to go back and find um, paperwork years later that, uh, or, or euthanization, um, you know, years later that would warrant uh, what they hoped would be a conviction. But again, this, this all started as a bit of a moral persecution of Joe by uh, Carol Baskin and the animal rights. You know, meanwhile, when Carol Baskin was trying to get a, a tiger imported from South America, you know, in, in those forms, you got to disclose what's happened to your tigers. And, you know, she talks about her, her own euthanization, including for a, for a, for a soft tissue injury, a serious soft tissue injury to a back leg that they had the doctor euthanize. Um, and we'll get into the euthanization stuff and, and why Joe's uh, euthanization of the tigers here was warranted, but it's, 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 it's common. Carol did it. She had to admit to it. Um, so and Howard Baskin was messaging Matt Bryant. We happened to catch up today <clears throat> with a former employee from 2014 who called after reading the news reports. He said something <clears throat> we have heard from others, which is that Joe ran it about Carol Daly, sometimes multiple times a day and on a number of occasions made statements like I'll kill her. If you want to talk to him, let me know. Um, but there's no question about that. So Joe Exotic had his Joe Exotic TV show. And after being uh, hounded, infiltrated by PETA, um, his employees harassed. Uh, even Rinky was contacted by Carol directly. And he just started this dog and pony show uh, of, of taking the rivalry very public with Carol um, saying that, you know, asking anybody, asking people in the audience, uh, Alan Glover admits, like, the people in the audience were asked if they want to kill her, you know? Um, you know, he was doing it so openly. Uh, you've seen the videos probably if you watch Tiger King. Uh, you know, it was just, it was part of his, his act as Joe Exotic. You know, as a lawyer, I wouldn't advise that, but, you know, the First Amendment does protect it. And so, um, you know, she's, she's changed his livelihood. She's, when you affect his bottom line, you affect the, the, the food that the cats could eat. And so all these animals, you know, now they're, they're doing deals for Walmart leftover meat and, you know, beg barring and stealing for, for lame horses to be able to shoot them and feed, like they're, they're doing all this stuff to keep all these animals fed. Um, and you know, the more pressure Carol put, the worse it was for the animals. And then she'd say, well, it's worse for the animals. And then the animals, um, you know, ultimately would be shipped to a, a global federation of animal sanctuaries who you're going to hear involved facility, you know, Pat Craig and some of those guys. Um, and, and, and it don't, don't, don't get it twisted. This is highly political. Um, you know, the, the, the people who you're hearing from are hearing me talk about Humane Society of the United States, um, GFAS, PETA, Carol Baskin, these, these select people with the DOJ and Fish and Wildlife and FBI, even when you get into Nat Geo, which we'll talk about, um, they're all for this Big Cat Safety Act. They're all politically aligned. They attend the same soirees. They, 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 they deal with some of the same lobbyists there. They deal with some of the same filmmakers. It's, it's, it's messy, right? Um, you know, and, and I've gotten arguments with people about eating meat. I eat meat. Um, I'm not wearing much leather today. I probably got a leather, I got a leather belt on. I got an alligator belt on. Um, should I do that? Um, I don't know. Uh, should I watch football? Um, it's violence. There's brain injuries. We, we, at some point, we got to make our own decisions, right? I'm, I'm big into moderation. So back to the email. Um, you know, Howard's talking to old employees. You got you got an important email 
from 2014, um, 2014 people, uh, from this guy, Ben Bryant with Fish and Wildlife. So again, a member of the federal government, uh, essentially law enforcement. And Anna Frostick with Humane Society makes a formal complaint with Ben Bryant, February 6, 2014, um, saying, Ben, find a complaint that we put in the mail to you and headquarters staff this morning is described in the attached. We believe that Joe Schreibel is facilitating violations of the Captive Wildlife Safety Act by transporting tiger cubs in interstate commerce to non-exempt entities. The the law changed in 2016, which I'm not going to get into the, all of that, but um, you know, the, even the Humane Society's complaint says that these were potential ESA violations involving tigers, and they wanted they wanted FWS to investigate. What happened? They investigated, or they didn't investigate, but nothing happened. So you got frustration building. Humane Society is communicating with the ALDF and Carol Baskin. Joe's still doing what he's doing. Tensions are building. Um, Matthew Bryant's just, you know, he's copied on this back in 2014 as well because Ben Bryant with FWS sends it to Matthew Bryant. Um, anyway, so subject Joe Schreibogel, formal complaint, February 6, 2014, eight years ago. Uh, so then all of a sudden you look at the complaint, you look at what's being emailed and it gets into all of the lawsuits going on from 2011, um, between Carol and Joe. So they're saying, look, because these lawsuits are filed, Joe is Joe, you need to target this guy. He is the pariah. Um, if you talk to these individual uh, exotic animal lawyers, I mean, exotic animal owners, they would say the opposite. They, they would say that they were being bullied by HSUS, uh, GFAS, and everything else because of the amount of money involved. Um, you're going to get the AZA involved at some point, Amer uh, American Zoological Association. They side with HSUS and GFAS. And all that. So... Um, and if I'm wrong about this stuff, I'm still trying to learn. It's only been a year. So I apologize. Correct me in the comments. So, um, you know, I I again, they talk about 2014. Uh, like even in some of these complaints, it talks about how um, that ceremony that Joe, John Finley and Travis Maldonado had in 2014 was not legally binding. Um, you know, they're so caught up. These are major organizations and nonprofits that are so caught up in Joe's personal life and whether his marriage is binding and, mm -hmm. and what he's doing from a trademark copyright perspective and, and you know, who owns what it's, it's obsession. So, um, so let's see 20 continuing 2014. I know when we get to 2015, things get interesting. All right, let me switch to 2015. Mm -hmm. So 2015, um, they're, they're continuing to send source, source docs, um, documenting Joe's abuse. Again, this started, you know, with, with his traveling show and then, and then moving into the, you know, to, to what he's doing with transfers of animals. Um, and, um, they, they send a doc called August 27, 2015, Howard. So in 2018, Howard Baskin sends a document to Matt Bryant, Agent Matt Bryant, um, called August 27, 2015, Joe coming to Florida to commit murder-suicide. No. No. He, he actually came. I think that's the trip that he came and went to talk to authorities about um, Don Lewis and some of Carol's notary fraud, alleged purposes of this video. Um, this is all part of an investigation. Um, so Joe went to the park, you know, and, and again, Joe, Joe ran his mouth about, um, about Carol. Uh, but it, it, it's, 
you know, Joe, like at this point, he's he's sending videos to 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 Howard. Um, you know, as Carol noted in that earlier video, in that in that in that uh, in her summary of her diaries. Everybody was threatening her life. She couldn't attribute anything to anybody. It's still happening. You go on TikTok, she still talks about her death threats. Um, you know, at some point it's monetization. Um, so uh, then you get into the interesting emails. So there's this, there's this, there's a series of exchanges in 2015 between Howard Baskin and Matthew Bryant. Um, their relationship has continued on for years. Uh, mostly vicariously through um, through HSUS and, and other third parties. But September 19, 2015, Howard Baskin from Big Cat Rescue writes, Special Agent Bryant, I'm not sure how you would like to be addressed. And he's going through depositions of this guy, Chris Gore, uh, and telling him, where he needs to prosecute and how he needs to prosecute and giving him legal advice, even though I don't think Howard was licensed as a lawyer, but it doesn't matter for purposes of that. And ends it, before I burden you with more, I suggest you let me know when you have time to read through this um, <clears throat> and that he's gonna go through more statements and provide more feedback. Um, and says, perhaps, we could discuss by phone when you can. The better question might be, do they provide enough smoke to put someone in there undercover to observe and obtain more specific information and provide an unimpeachable, credible account? Who's he talking about? Yes, Joe Exotic. 2015, Howard Baskin is asking a federal agent um, whether one could, one would be, the one would be the ability of the defense to allege it's terrible writing they are just disgruntled former employees perhaps we could discuss by phone the better question might be do they provide enough smoke to put someone in there undercover to observe and obtain more specific information and provide an unimpeachable credible account the good news is that it's easy to get employed there true uh the difficult part is managing to stay since they fire people right and left sometimes seemingly on a whim and to lead up, he says, I can tell you from my phone conversation with him, uh, uh, somebody reporting on Joe, that he independently told me that the standing joke was Joe saying that one of the baby tigers just died, meaning that he had sold it. Um, and so, look, the, the, the infatuation, where, where's Joe's emails to Agent Brian? Or where's, where's Joe's, you know, harassment um, of... Of Carol's business. Well, he'd go on these videos and he'd talk about Don Lewis's death. So that's an albatross that she couldn't shake. Um, you know, when it came to Joe, he was he was going to authorities uh, and talking about whether she was committing real estate fraud. Why was she wanting to shut up Joe? Is it because of the animals, or is it because he was the only one in the country? Continuing to keep Don Lewis as a reference point. It's a fair question. Okay. So allergies are starting to get me. Um, so, uh, so 2015, you know, we have Howard putting in the idea about, about uh, infiltration at Joe's Park. Howard, uh, Matt Bryant responds, thanks, Howard. And plain old Matt works for me. You can, you can just call me Matt. Um, and he said, I'm looking over stuff. Be back in, real soon. Um, Howard says, I've got, he said, um, so if you think there is something here worth a few minutes on the phone, just let me know. And October of 2015, uh, he said, I started it Thursday and have info on a Liger Club cub donated to Texas for 7K. I'm tracking down. <clears throat> and we'll start delving into your intel during this process. Thanks for checking in. So at this point, Howard is providing uh, evidence to Agent Bryant in order to prosecute uh, his enemy, um, somebody they've been going after for years. And and look, I I'm all for doing things the right way. And and 
you know, to the extent that was, it's an altruistic um, means to an end, I get it. But that's that's not what this seems to show. So October 13, 2015, Howard Baskin writes, thanks for letting me know, Matt. There is a bigger picture here, but I am sure, I'm not sure to what extent it involves violations of the ESA. So Howard starts off the next email saying, I don't even know if this violates the ESA. Um, you know, it, it's not going to be as easy as, as we got rid of James Garrettson. Um, this one's going to be a little more complicated. Uh, and then he says, Howard Baskin says to Matt Bryant, there is kind of a network of people who use tiger cubs to make money and animals seem to move around among them. For instance, Joe Schreibogel is close friends with Bill Meadows, who runs a horrible place called Tiger Safari, not far from Joe in Oklahoma. Um, again, they're, they're saying Joe is friends with this guy that's horrible. Um, and so then they get into the, the real sticky wicket. The last sentence of that paragraph, the former employee also mentioned Meadows buying animals from Doc Antle in Myrtle Beach. Antle is a particularly interesting situation in my mind, Howard Baskin says to Matt Bryant. Unlike the others, he is a master marketer who is doing very well financially, with the cub petting being central to his operation. During his seven-month tourist season, folks who have visited and complained to us uh, always tell us he has about half a dozen cubs. Even ignoring the USDA guidance that cubs should only be pet from 8 to 12 weeks old, which is not a rule, so not enforced, and assuming he uses cubs from four to, say, 16 weeks to keep a constant supply during his visiting season, he has to be breeding at least a few dozen cubs each year. So again, it, you know, as of this time, they're acknowledging cub petting is legal. There's actually USDA guidance saying when it should be done. The USDA was well aware it was going on, and yet their concern is the the creation of the cubs to keep the inventory to be able to keep the money making. And I agree. If 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 we're putting tigers, baby tigers, out there just so we can have photos, that's a problem. Um, and what's happening to these tigers? Because these are not tigers that could ever really realistically be released into the wild. I get it. Um, if you're euthanizing tigers just so you can make money from cub petting, I get it. We do a lot worse things to cattle. Uh, we do a lot worse things to, to, to sh dogs. Um, you know, Cock, uh, cockfighting rings, um, but tigers are certainly different, and you know that level of profiteering is certainly inexcusable. So, um, <sighs> Howard goes on to say, "I doubt if this group of associated people is a ring <coughs> like FY FWS Fish and Wildlife Service." Uh, found an Operation Snowplow, but it does seem to be a network that these cubs move around and in, in, uh, move around in at times. As I mentioned earlier, unrelated to Joe, without someone on the inside, it may be very difficult to know which, if any, of these people are violating laws that FWS enforces. And while getting into Joe's is easy, Antle is much smarter, and it would be much more difficult to get someone in there. Anyway, just some other thoughts related to our dialogue in case of any use. So, again, in, in 2015, Howard Baskin is messaging Special Agent Bryant, who was the lead investigator in the murder for hire uh, case, and saying, look, there's all these abysmal people, Bill Meadows, Doc Antle, but let's infiltrate Joe. Why? Why not? Im it's too hard to get into Antle. They didn't mention infiltrating Bill Meadows. They're 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 focused on Joe because he is a personal problem to them. Because of the Howard, because of the Don Lewis stuff, because of um, because of him doing research into into her illegal dealings. That's Joe versus Carol. You get it? It gets deeper. Infiltration. 
Who did it? Who was the infiltrator? Gosh, that's, I think that's the next question for the next video. Who was the infiltrator? Did they even know they were the infiltrator? Did they know they were being used? You know, did, did these people that hate Carol, that, that Carol shut down, James Gerritsen, Jeff Lowe, did they, did they intend to work with their, with their enemy so fluidly? Nobody I've spoken to at any point knew about these 2014, 25, 2015 relationships. And, and I'm not done. Um, you get into 2016 and the email chain list gets crazy. And so you've now got, um, you've now got a bunch of people. Let me find one. So as of April of 2016, Carney and Nasser. So if you search Carol and Carney and Nasser, they're they're involved in the conservation game film project together. Carney is an attorney, senior counsel for wildlife and regulatory affairs at the Animal Legal Defense Fund. She emails uh, Amanda Green and Anna Frostick, we talked about her, and Matthew Bryant. Again, the prosecutor and the agent. And the subject is GW Tigers, which has tigers. And they attach a document that we don't have, or they didn't give to us, called the 2016-0115 Nasser Welcome to the Jungle Manuscript. And the email reads, yes, Amanda and Matt, thank you so much, all caps, uh, for all the time you took to meet and discuss this, exclamation point. I've attached my law review article manuscript. It is in publication now, so I don't have a hard copy and not in Westlaw yet. There's some additional information in here about generic tigers, the generic tiger loophole, and the USDA application of the Animal, Animal Welfare Act handling regulations that has encouraged the lucrative cub bottle feeding sessions that we discussed. I have copies of all the sources that are cited herein. So again, over the course of years, Amanda Green and Matt Bryan are being groomed um, about the perils of cub petting, bottle feeding, and things that aren't otherwise illegal, but they're morally um, questionable because of what they do in the, tide, in, the, in the cub petting industry. That's not how you use government, people. You don't use special agents and prosecutors on things that are not illegal yet wanting infiltration to figure out what somebody's doing illegal because they are your they are philosophically um, in disagreement or they're profiting on things you don't want them to profit off of. <clears throat> um, so here we go. You got you got Anafrostic Humane Society, uh, Miss Nasser with the ALDF, and you move from 2016 to 2017 and you got Bonnie Boone with APHIS. We talked about that. They were, the, they were involved with the bringing down of James Gerritsen. Um, and they're sending all sorts of things. Bonnie Boone's going to Joe's Park uh, to investigate. Um, and you get into... Um, Let's see, where's the other, some of the other names on these emails. Um, uh, Daniel Mobley with the USDA. Um, you know, everybody's kind of circling up, trying to figure out uh, Joe Exotic. Come 2017, you got Heather Hintz, who was both the lawyer for PETA and the lawyer for Carol Baskin, messaging Matt Bryant um, dear Matt, this is your written response to a voicemail you left for me yesterday morning requesting a return call. Your voicemail referenced GW Exotics. Uh, my firm has not had any prior contact with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, so we had no knowledge what specifically your inquiry concerns, but I wanted to advise you of my, the scope of my firm's involvement in civil litigation involving entities that may or may not be involved in the entity your voicemail referenced. 
And then she went all through the lawsuit stuff. Um, and our involvement with Mr. Maldonado, G.W. Park, and Gerald Wayne Zhu is since 2013 been related solely to my collection of the judgments. Big Cat Rescue Corp does not have a judgment against Greater Winniewood Zoo, which states it is opening its own Winniewood, Oklahoma exotic animal park. And so um, then you get into 2017 communications with this guy, Jeff Johnson, who's also in the animal industry. Um, we're going to have a whole chapter on Jeff Johnson because Jeff, um, like Joe, then was Joe's rival, then worked with James, then worked with Bryant. James and, and Jim, Jeff Johnson and Agent Bryant became best friends um, until Jeff Johnson wanted to go. Uh, he didn't. He didn't like the prosecute the persecution of Joe anymore. He thought the murder for hire was set up, and he went to meet with Joe's public defenders. And at that point, Agent Bryant uh, made public statements saying, "If that's the game he's going to play, um, he was going to start releasing information about Jeff Johnson." It's true. Uh, Jeff Johnson killed himself. Um, you know after after Tiger King came out last year um, and was contacting me days before and I got one of those one of those hacking messages you know where somebody sends you on Facebook um, hey is this a video of you and I didn't click on it because I've, I've seen enough of those and two or three days later uh, Jeff Johnson's killed himself um, Jeff said he had recordings some of them were deleted um, you know, real suspicious stuff. But when I get into the Jeff Johnson stuff and it's in our motion for new trial, you're not going to believe it. Like you're not going to believe the manipulation of people uh, in order to secure a prosecution um, and how it depends on what, whether you were team government or team USA, sorry, mm, team USA or team Joe, depending upon which side you were on that decided how, whether you got information and whether um, you were going to be, for instance, banned from the courtroom. Once, once, once Jeff switched, um, they had a full intent to keep him out of the courtroom and use the U.S. Marshal Service to do so. According to calls, we'll get into that. See you in part five.